Good morning, class. So today's topic is microsporangiogenesis. So microsporangiogenesis microsporangiogenesis it is called as a formation of a microspores in the anther. So this microspores are the main gamut of a plant cell. So in yesterday's class we have discussed about the different layers of a anther, right? So it is composed of epidermis, endothelium, microsporangiogenesis cells, middle layer, and the epiderm. So here the this is the, the central cell. It is called as a sporangiogenesis cell. So whatever the stages are there, whatever the changes are taking place, it will takes it will especially takes place in the sporangiogenesis cells. Now let's see how the sporangiogenesis will takes place. What are the different steps are there? Okay, so here, so first, what is that? The sporangiogenesis cells, which we can see here, it is being tightly, compactly arranged. So in the next step, what happens is that, so the sporangiogenesis cells, when it become, when it, uh, when the plant will become adult, so this sporangiogenesis cells will get loosely arranged. So again, I will tell, the sporangiogenesis cells are like there, it will get loosely arranged. So now, what happens is that first, the sporangiogenesis cells. So it will changes into the. So it will get now. It is being loosely arranged. So this structure it is called as a microspore mother cell. So again, I will tell sporangiogenesis cells. Next step, I will tell you that it will convert into the microspore. Mother, microspore mother cells. So this microspore mother cells it is deployed in nature. Okay, it is deployed in nature. And next, the microspore mother cells will undergo the meiotic division. So it will undergo the meiotic division. So then next step, it will form the microspore. It will form microspore. Tetrad. So this microspore tetrad, it is it is having four haploid. It is having four haploid cells. So in microspore tetrad, in another in the next microspore tetrad, it is having the four haploid cells. So because it is having the four haploid cells, it will get converted into the it will get um, different structural formation. So, in microscope tetrad, we get a different arrangement. Na, but for that, for example, if here, so the three cells, okay, three haploid cells. So, it is three it is having here, and the back side will observe the one. So, this is one kind of arrangement which is called as a tetrahedral arrangement. Tetrahedral, understood? So, next. If the cells are arranged in the form of a line, so that it is called as a so it is called as a linear arrangement. It is called as a linear microspore tetrad. Understood? So now it is it is been arranged such that it is been arranged in this form. Then it is called as a F shape. Then it is called as a F shape. Right. And next is that. So suppose if um, the microspore is arranged in the form, in this form, so then it is called as a iso. Then it is called as a iso bilateral. So then it is called as a iso bilateral. So these are the different shapes which is gained by the microspore tetrad. So majorly this tetrahedral shape it is being observed in the it is being observed in the angiosperms. So angiosperms only now the tetrahedral shape banana now we can see the tetrahedral shape. So this was a different changes where the sporangiogenesis cells are converting into microspore mother cells. Which are deployed in number, then it will undergo the meiotic division. So then it will convert into the microspore tetrad. So all this tetrad is getting arranged in the different form, like as tetrahedral, linear, F shape, or isobilateral in the angiosperm. So this kind of a uh, arrangement is being seen. So here there are three cells, and from the back side, so the another cells is being observed. Understood? 
So now this tetrahedral shape, so this magnetosphere of cells will get changes in the form of a tetrahedral. So next is stage in another. So in microscope mother cells so in another cleaning. Now the microscope tetrahedral and what are the microscope? Microspore tetrahedral and this microspore tetrahedral it is haploid in the nature. Okay, so next is that. Now let's see the structure of this microspore. Okay, let's see the structure of a microspore. Okay, now let's see the structure of structure of microspore. So here, so this microspore it is having the inside layer. So it is having the inside layer which is called as a inside item. So next followed by the inside layer there is a outer layer which is called as a there is an outer layer which is called as a enzyme. So this one is a in time, okay. So this in time it is made up of it is made up of cellulose or pectin. So you know, you are doing that. It is made up of cellulose and the pectin. So outer one it is called as a enzyme. So enzyme is having some some thicker name. So we can see some sort of a thickening in the in the enzyme. Okay, we can see the sort of a thickening in the enzyme. So it is what? It is a enzyme. So this enzyme it is made up of. So enzymes are made up of the sporopollenin cells. Sporopollenin. It is made up of a sporopollenin. So here we we can see. So inside um, this microspore there is a cytoplasma. So here first what happens that. The cytoplasma first the cytoplasmic division will take place first thing under that cytoplasmic uh, division will take place that is cytokinesis will take place understood so we know that there will be a nucleus in the center so now cytokinesis division will take place and after the cyto uh, cytokinesis will be followed by the karyokinesis karyokinesis under you know nuclear division right so now this nucleus will also will get divide okay this will also it will get divide so next what happens is that in the cytoplasmic division so here whatever the cytoplasmic division is there it is irregular division so in any other way, so this uh, nucleus will get surrounded by the cytoplasma and this one is get again surrounded by the large cytoplasma Cells are understood. So, in any large cytoplasmic division, are there? In this small cytoplasmic division, are there? Understood. So, now this this cell, okay, this uh, cytoplasma containing the nucleus, it is called as a vegetative cells. It is called as what? It is called as a vegetative cell, or it is called as a tube cell. Why we call it as tube cell? Because this um, vegetative cell will help in the formation of a, a pollen tube. So now this cell it is called as a. So this cell it is called as a generative. Okay, it is called as a generative cells. Understood? So here. Yeah. So this is a vegetative cell and this one is a generative cell. So why we are calling it as a vegetative cell? Because it does not help uh, in the 
in the reproduction whereas generative cells will actually form a male gamete so it is a part where it is a, this containing nucleus will helps in the in the will helps will get fused with the female gamete so this is a generative cell so this vegetative cell it composed of a it is mainly composed of a nutrients which will provide the nourishment for the for the vegetative cells understood so this was the structure of a microspore so it consists of enzyme enzyme so enzyme is made up of sporopollenin so as i said has in previous class we have said that the sporopollenin it is a very stable organic compound understood so next in the inner one is the enzyme it is made up of cellulose and pectin so here the cytoplasmic division will take place which is unequal division which forms the vegetative cells and the generative cells so this was a structure of a of a microspore so this microspores are haploid in nature so you know it is haploid in nature understood so during the time uh, during the time of a fusion so this um vegetative cell it will form a tube like structure so we held and then so my sporopollenin it is very stable organic compound it, it doesn't get affected for the temperature pressure or any kind of a acid where the ph can alter understood so in the on the wall na break maadi banlikke or the vegetative cell so we can see some of the pores here so this pore it is called as a germ pore so when you so even the germ pore in the so this vegetative cells will form a tube from the germ pore so this was a structure of a microspore understood now let's see so this microspore is nothing but um, is nothing but the pollen grain so this pollen grain so the microspore in the next stage so it is being now fully developed now so it is having the enzyme enzyme and all so this is a last stage where the pollen grains are formed or the microspores are formed so when it get when it when it attain the time to release so again i will test what will happen is that the endodermis Uh, the epidermis, endothelium, all the cells will become, it will become fibrous. The line on it, this one will become the fibrous. Where only the middle cells, so only the middle cells, it will retain as it is. So hence, whatever the pollen grains are there, it will get ruptured there. So it will get ruptured in this part, and next to the uh, pollen grains. And it will get released from the stamen. So the uh, the the in this region where the middle cells are more, so this middle cells doesn't get convert into the fibrous cells. So hence it will get ruptured, and this microspores will get released to fertilize the female gamete. Understood? So this was all about the all about the microspore and genesis. Understood. So here, so what is the? Now let's see the function of a pollen grain. Understood. So here, the function, the study of a pollen grains is called the study is called as a pollenology. So pollen grains. Let's see the functions of a pollen grains. The study of a pollen grains it is called as a pollenology. In another interval, it is called as the pollenology. And this pollen grain, so uh, it is uh, very nutritive. So it is even being uh, consumed. Uh, um, so it is, it is even this pollen grains are edible in nature. So and there no pollen grains. Kuda now consume more. So this pollen grains uh, is being used for the athlete. So it will give the more energy and even for the growing children. So it is edible in nature, and also the po uh, the pollen grains. Okay, this was the advantage where it is uh, giving some nutritive uh, nutritive supply for the body. So hence it is edible. So for the growing children and for the
that lets to give more energy uh, so they this uh, pollen creams are made in the form of a tablet or the syrup and it is being commercially sold understood so next it is also edible and next if it is uh, if we come for the disadvantage so this pollen grains uh, it can also cause some of the respiratory disorders so if we in pollen grains kuda adanna now breathing madaga enagutte and selpa uh, there there will be the some sort of allergy like uh, asthma bronchitis the allergy can be observed um, by the pollen grain so it is been well known that the hay fever which is been caused by the the pollen grains of a parthenium so parthenium is a exotic plant so now parthenium na bere ond country inda adopt maadkondirudu so alli parthenium nalli iruvantha pollen grains if we get if we take that if we breathe in that pollen grains so it will causes a hay fever so even the disadvantage is that it is a causing some of the respiratory disorder so this was all so some of the advantage and the disadvantage of a pollen grain so advantage is that it is edible and the disadvantage is that it will causes some of the respiratory disorder so as we discussed here so all these stages it is not observing in the same anther so in prati even the stages say no one day anther nalli nadiyadilla so all these uh, stages uh, Uh, it will it will be it is in the form of a stress which i had explained in the one single diagram so this was the formation of microsporangiosis thank you